So most of you, probably all of you, had to fill out uh, or get approval by your institutional review board. Is that correct? Really, you guys all do this? Okay. Um, this really is a, if you can't read this, I've got um, the people up here in the hoods saying, confess, didst thou not seek to delude all guileless youth, youth that the world be round? And the other guy is saying, man, I hate selling new textbooks in Texas. <laughs> um, but the IRB is, you know, I, I kind of think of it as a necessary evil. Um, since a lot of you deal with students, student education, we've sort of made a blanket policy across all of the education directorate that all education awards have to be reviewed by your institutional review board. In most cases, you've been determined to be exempt because there is an exemption for education under the common rule. Um, but there are some cases where you might be videotaping students in a classroom that then go on the web. You want to make sure that those students can't be identified. If you're collecting information from students, you know, you got to be careful about um, safeguarding their identity, et cetera. So everybody, it's not just you guys, everybody that gets an education award at NSF has to go through the IRB process. Okay. <clears throat> um, like I said, um, Talk to us on a regular basis. Don't hesitate to let us know. And not just when things go wrong, we like to hear about the good stuff too. So if you've got newspaper clippings, um, television, radio, campus news, things like that, we love to hear about that. Uh, I'll talk about NSF highlights a little bit later. Um, highlights are um, sort of like news items um, that we can then put into our presidential request to Congress. Sometimes we like to showcase some projects that we think are doing very well. Um, let us know when something's going to happen, like if you're going to have a professional development workshop, that might be a good time for uh, a site, by, site visit by a program officer. Um, if you want to get a hold of us, email is usually the best way. We're always running in and out of our office. We've got uh, meetings that happen on a regular basis. Um, so send us an email, or if you really want to talk to us on the phone, one of my uh, PIs will send me an email, and then using email, we'll set up a time to talk on the phone. Okay. Uh, one of my personal pleas is to please put your award number in the subject line of the email, because usually the question it comes up, and then I'll have to look up your file electronically, and I need the um, number to look that up. And if you don't have it readily available, ne neither do I, so then I have to look for the number first before I do it. So if you can put your uh, award number in the subject line of the email, that saves me about 10 minutes. Okay. Um, crediting NSF, okay? We give you the money, we want to get some credit for doing this, all right? So when you uh, put out a publication or something like that, uh, we want you to say at the end that this material is based upon work supported by the National Science Foundation under grant number whatever. Uh, if you're doing a radio interview, we would like to, to acknowledge NSF support. A lot of times a newspaper person will call you up and you'll do a little article, try to, convince the uh, newspaper person to put in something that NSF funded this work, okay? Um, and then on the other hand, we don't want to take any of the blame, all right? So <laughs> we also want you to put in a disclaimer here that says, any opinions, findings, and conclusions or recommendations expressed in this material are those of the authors and don't necessarily reflect the views of the National Science Foundation, okay? Um, if you produce some materials, uh, we like to have the opportunity to get a copy, all right? So you are responsible for making sure that the program officer at NSF gets access to, either electronically or in paper form, a copy of every publication or material based on or developed under this award with the award number, et cetera, okay? Now, sometimes the program officer says, no, my office is too cluttered, you know, don't bother, okay? But you have to make that offer to the program officer, okay, to get the materials to them. And if you want to use uh, NSF logos, you go right ahead, all right? There's a website here uh, on the NSF website, and they've all got different varieties of logos. Feel free to use the NSF logo on your NSF-sponsored work. Don't use it on stuff that's not NSF-sponsored, right? But anything that's NSF-sponsored, you know, feel free to use uh, this logo. Also, make sure that you go to our website, okay? NSF.org is the National Sanitary Foundation. <laughs> They have a blue ball with NSF in it, right? But it's, it's not us, right? I've had some PIs use the wrong one every now and then. <laughs> okay, how to find information about NSF awards, okay? 
Uh, this is the NSF website. Uh, they just redesigned it recently. If um, that little banner up near the top, one of them uh, over to the left there says awards, okay? And if you click on that um, banner that says awards, you'll get uh, a web page that looks like this. Uh, and there's different tabs at the top. Actually, I like to click on one of the tabs a little bit over that says search all fields because it gives you more options. But if you want to see anything that NSF has funded in manufacturing in Alabama, you can type manufacturing in the keyword at the top, click on Alabama in the state, and it pops up. And you can look at just active awards or you can look at historical awards back to 75 or so. Um, you can say, um, you can say what is ATE funded last year in anything. So you can search by the program. Uh, you can search by program officer. You can find out what's Dave doing, you know, what are his awards. Um, there's a whole way of, a variety of things that you can search for. So it's good to see, like, what else is happening in your state, who else is doing something similar to you in, in NSF, and not even just in the education directorate, but you can see, like, what's happening in the engineering directorate, what's happening in the biology directorate, et cetera. So a good way to find out what else NSF is funding. And it, it, if you click on one, it takes you to a page that gives you a whole lot of information. It's too small to read. But it'll tell you who the PI is, the contact information of the PI, um, and, and an abstract of the award as well. So you can get a hold of them. And your awards will be up here now, too. So you can find out yours. Okay. Now, things change, as Dennis said. Okay. Um, a variety of things can change. Uh, a big one that doesn't happen too often, but is possible, is a change in scope. Okay? So you started off doing automotive technology and you decide, I'm not gonna do that, I'm gonna do biotechnology instead. That would be a big change in scope, right? <laughs> you can't just do that, right? <laughs> so if you are making a major course correction like this, you have to file an official notification in Fastlane that has to be approved by NSF, okay? Little things can usually be handled by an email. Big things like that takes, takes a lot of things because that means you're doing a project that you weren't really reviewed to do. Yeah. Um, there are budget changes. Budget changes happen all the time. Okay? Um, you're making this best guess at the beginning of the project and come two or three years later, you say, well, I didn't quite guess accurately. Right? I've got too much money in this line, not enough money in this line, et cetera. Um, you can do that, okay? You have the authority to make changes, shift money around within the budget, pretty flexible, all right? Um, with a couple of exceptions, okay? But if you wanna move something, you know, from graduate student spending to undergraduate student spending, go ahead and do it, you can do that, okay? There are a lot of changes you can make in there. You can move funds from materials into salaries, salaries into materials. You have a lot of flexibility as long as it's in the best interest of the project. Okay? I'll talk about an exception in a minute. Um, timelines might change. Okay? Um, it's very rare when somebody gets done ahead of time, <laughs> but sometimes things take longer. Okay? Let us know if there's going to be a significant change in the timeline. Okay? Um, sometimes the principal investigator changes. Okay? You might have a co-PI that drops out. You want to replace that co-PI with another co-PI. You have to get NSF approval to do that, but it's pretty easy. That requires a change in fast lane. Okay? Sometimes the PI, now that he got an NSF award, the president notices them, they go over to the dark side, and they become a dean, and now you've got to get a new PI. Right? Uh, sometimes that happens, and we can do that. Um, rarely, um, a principal investigator moves to another institution, okay? and they want to take their award with them. That's a big deal. okay? Uh, because technically we make awards to the institution, not to the individual, okay? So nine times out of ten, the two institutions are very, you know, compatible, and they say, okay, you know, you can take the money with you. Sometimes the institution wants to hold on to the funds, okay, and has to get a new PI, okay? So a lot of these changes will require uh, requests in Fastlane that we have to approve, okay? Um, participant support is a budget line that is more or less sacred. Thou shalt not move money out of participant support costs without NSF approval. Okay? So a lot of times, you know, the reviewers, they value this. They say, oh man, they're going to impact, you know, 500 teachers, you know, and they got all this money in there to, get, you know, pay them stipends. 
And then you, a couple of years down the line, you say, well, I only got 100, <laughs> and I want to move the money for something else. Well, wait a minute, you know? Why did you only get 100, et cetera, all right? So moving money out of participant support costs is a big deal. Um, sometimes I've done it, like when um, the PI tells me, well, once I got the NSF award, uh, Lockheed Martin thought it was a great project too, and they gave me a whole bunch of money to pay for the teachers, so I didn't have to use the NSF money for the teachers. Right? That, that makes sense, and they still got the same total number of teachers that they were planning. So in cases like that, then I can say, okay, you can move that money around. But it is a big deal that uh, requires uh, NSF approval. Um, no cost extensions are available. Towards the end, you know, you need more time to finish your work, you can do this, okay? There's two types of no cost extensions. There's a grantee approved no cost extension, which you should ask for first, and then there's an NSF approved no cost extension, okay? The grantee approved no cost extension, as you may in indicate from the name, grantee approved, okay? It's pretty much pro forma, right? You get it. Okay, I look at it, I don't even get to approve it. The button that I click on just says reviewed, okay? And you automatically get an extra 12 months if that's what you're asking for, okay? If you need more time than that, then it has to be an NSF approved no cost extension that I have to look at the reasons for, okay? So in all these cases, it's best to discuss these with a the program officer before you make the official request in Fastlane. Questions about these? Changes that happen. And changes happen. I, I can't think of a single ward that didn't make one sort of change or another. Okay. Um, if you want to make a notification request in Fastlane, you can get Fastlane again from that same banner at the top. There's a link right to Fastlane on the right. You go into Fastlane. You've probably all seen this page a few times. <coughs> um, and you can prepare it. One thing that a lot of people don't notice is if you look over to the left of your, um, this thing, those little blue banners down the bottom, there's something called a demonstration site. And it's a dummy fast lane, okay, with a dummy projects, okay? So you can go into this demonstration site and make all the wrong turns and end up in different rabbit holes all, all you want, right, and, until you find out the right way to do something, right? So it's a good place to practice before you want to do something uh, for the real time. You want to change a co-PI, you go to the demonstration site and make all your mistakes and try to figure out the right way on how to make your thing. A lot of times when a, a PI calls me up and says, how do I do this? I'll go on to the demonstration site while they're on the real site and we go through it sort of together to try to find the thing. So you can use Fastlane for notifications and requests. You're going to be putting in your annual and final reports in here. Um, your financial transactions that your business office will be doing, they'll be putting quarterly reports up, up on Fastlane. You all know that the proposal submission can either be Fastlane or grants.gov. And if you're asked to be a reviewer, and a lot of you probably will now that you're into the community, we're always looking for reviewers, <coughs> um, you'll um, be reviewing proposals on Fastlane as well, and you submit your reviews on Fastlane. Um, now, remember I told you you've got we have a lot of rotators at NSF, people that come in and out. If you look at the program officers in the back of the, of the list here, I know that there's at least five of them that are rotators, okay? And so there's a chance that the program officer you started with might not be the program officer you end up with because they might rotate out, okay? Um, if you go to the award thing like we talked about before, and if you type in your award number, okay, and do the search, Okay, your proposal, your award number will come up, and it will tell you who your program officer is. Okay, so you always should be able to find out who your program officer is at any time. Okay. Um, there's other information on the DUE home pages. Okay, if you go to the NSF uh, general website, you can go to the education directorate. We've got the various divisions there for education directorate, undergraduate education. My division, I'm in the division of research on learning. Um, we've got uh, division of graduate education and a human resource and development division. So if you wanna know about the ATE program, it'll take you to the solicitation, list of all the program officers up there, okay? Now, for highlights, we have a, a new website on the research.gov place to check out. Okay? And you can enter a lot of the information here. We like highlights, okay? 
Um, the, the highlights that we develop will show an exciting outcome of an NSF supported project. Any kind of transformative results, impacts of the outcome, et cetera. Um, we use these highlights, like I said, in the pre budget to the president, the president's request to Congress for uh, NSF funding, and any other federal or state policy makers. We can give those to business and industry, the general public. We use them for NSF uh, general outreach as well. Okay? So if you want to give us a highlight, we would love it. Okay? So we like short, straightforward sentences that articulate a single point. Okay? We don't like to use you know, multiple uh, lengthy essays. Um, this is going to be written for Congress, right? So use simple language. <laughs> don't use complicated scientific terminology. <laughs> Okay, uh, so write for a public audience, okay? Don't write the way you would do when you would be publishing in a scientific journal, okay? So this would be an example of a highlight that we used, okay? So robotic fish using an artificial muscle, okay? So very short, brief, to the point, fancy pictures, etc.